Hi everybody, this is Eddie Richardson. My name is James. This is one of the bar big stars Curry. Yeah, I mean, and this is, and this is this is my 10 minute my 10 minute, my 10 minute. My 10 minute story. Welcome everybody to another edition of My 10 Minute Stories. I'm your host, KJ Bradley, and I'm here with Mr. James Cheatham. How you doing, James? I am outstanding. Uh, I could be um, other things, but I choose to be outstanding today. <laughs> That's the best way to be, man. So I'm glad you came on the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wilderness Fire, I kind of got a chance to deep dive into it, man. You are an amazing vocal talent. Uh, wait, it, it, so are you called the vo voice over actor or what's, what's your official title? Official title is voice over artist. Uh, and that's kind of like a, a global encompassing of all aspects. So being the voice behind commercials, animations, video games, or audiobooks. So I have the ability to perform in all of those. So, tell, so yeah. Navy, Navy veteran, Army veteran, how long were you in the Navy and the Army? I started in the Navy fresh out of high school because I had zero ideas of what I wanted to do with myself. Um, I was like, you know what, you're going to pay for my college and I get to see the world? That's a win-win. Let's make it happen. I was in the Navy for four years from 99 to 03. Um, and then from there went into the reserves. So that way I was still working civilian side and then having the commitments to the reserve, you know, on the, the whole weekend thing and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But then in a three-year period in the reserves and going through nine different civilian jobs within that three-year period, I realized a pattern. Something's not working, and either A, the money sucked and the hours are great, or B, the hours are great and the money sucked. Did some analysis on myself and realized that I was more in tune with the military standpoint to begin with. And I missed that structure. I missed that, just that standard of being mm -hmm. like, Holy crap, I need to get back in. So I did. Um, I spent two and a half months in the Navy recruiter's office, trying to figure out a way to get me back into active duty. Mm -hmm. And it took the guy two and a half months to say, no, we don't have any room in active duty. What we can do is put you active reserve and then we can have you volunteer to get deployed. And then while deployed, you can volunteer to go active duty, but we're still gonna have to drop you down a pay grade and then completely change your job. And what, that sounds like I'm trying to get around my butthole to get to my elbow. That's not gonna work. <laughs> so frustrated, I picked up all my paperwork, which is a stack about yay thick, walked wow. right across the hall into the army office I said, Staff Sergeant so-and-so, what's the quickest you can give me to active duty? He said, seven days. I went, cool, <laughs> sign me up. Let's make it happen. That's awesome, man. And spent the remainder of my time uh, in the Army, uh, two duty stations. First one was with the 173rd Airborne, based out of Bamberg, Germany, uh, before they closed the Bamberg Post down. Mm -hmm. And they went to Afghanistan twice with those guys, missed them like crazy. From there, transitioned over to 212 Fires Brigade underneath 1st Armored Division, which is where you and I met. Um, and then, you know, my knees took a toll, and they said, please, no more. And the Army's like, hey, you're too broken to continue. We got to let you go. And I said, all right, cool. That, that, that brings up an interesting point. So, okay. So, now yeah. you're at that you're at that all-too-familiar transition point, right? That, hey, right. the Army says, hey, Thanks, but no thanks. We can't use you anymore. Go find something to do with yourself. Right. What does, what does James Cheatham do? James freaked out for <laughs> the, I kid you not, man, for the first 60 days of my now, you know, retired slash civilian self, I had no idea what to do. Uh, for about two weeks, spinning my wheels, trying to figure out what in the blue blazes am I going to do now? One day, I'm reading the Chronicles of Narnia out loud to my kids. If you haven't read them, perfect series. Do a far better job than the movies ever will. Uh, but there's about seven books in total. And with me being 
a guy who, you know, already comes from a theater background since age 16, and I've been acting on stage, multiple characters. I've got a gift for impersonations and pronouncing things the way they should sound. I made sure that every character in those books had their own voice. So that way my kids would know who was speaking without me having to say their names. Like, oh, that's Aslan. Yes, that's right. That, that was Aslan. On that same day, because we homeschool our kids, our mentor that comes and checks on us on a quarterly basis overheard me. She goes, oh my God, you've got such a great, have you ever considered doing audiobooks?" Went, no, not really. It wasn't until nine additional people told me the exact same thing, the exact same tonality. And it was by the 10th one that it was people we had never even met. And by the way, these 10 people have no relation to one another at all. Wow. Um, it, it was a couple. It was a, uh, it was a Caucasian lady and a dude from, I think, Cambodia. They, they were a beautiful married couple. Love them both. Uh, they found one of our postings for a changing table that we no longer need because uh, five kids is enough. I know that's right. Um, <laughs> got my supplies cut off to my wife's easy bake oven. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so gave away the changing table. They came and picked it up and just me describing the changing table and how we used it and how we no longer need it. The wife goes, Oh my gosh, you've got such a great voice for audiobooks. Have you ever considered that? I went, I hear you. I hear you. So a friend of the family who's, you know, a dear friend of mine is the husband of my wife's best friend from high school. Um, calls me up just to check on us. Say, hey, you know, you guys are in Cedar Rapids now. We're in Racine, Wisconsin. We're about four and a half hours away. We should hook up. And I said, Eric, let me run something by you really quick. What do you think about audiobooks? He goes, dude, you've got a great voice for that. If you want to get started, here's where you need to start. Wow. I went, okay, um, awesome. He goes, here's a good starter microphone. Here's some good starting equipment. You know, start in your closet because there's going to be enough clothes for that sound absorption kind of thing. And just start reaching out and making it happen and see what kind of jobs you land. I also recommend, you know, these following websites. I went, cool, that's pretty awesome. And still to this day, uh, Eric and I have maintained a, um, you know, what would be a Monday morning meeting. We actually do it in the evenings for just our weekly conference call. See where he's at, where I'm at, and just kind of go from there. Wow, kind of like an accountability buddy. Hold on a second. Exactly. We're running close to time. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we'll pick up right where we left off. Guys, you're watching 10 Minute Stories. All right, guys, we're back with uh, James Cheatham and my 10 Minute Stories. James, you were just telling us about how you and I believe Eric would have a accountability meeting every week, right? Yeah. Yep. It was accountability meeting every week to um... – to kind of give me, you know, some, some mentorship, some guidelines on how to kind of hone my craft and, and, and ultimately get to where I'm at today. So picking up March 2018 is when I started auditioning uh, on a website called ACX.com, which stands for the Audiobook Creative Exchange. They've got a partnership with Audible and Amazon for where authors and narrators alike can come together Authors submit their eBooks, narrators audition for them like you're just going to audition for a play. Narrator says, oh, yes, I love your voice. And then they just pick you from there. So I've been doing that. And obviously, you know, doing audiobooks right off the bat was not lucrative. Um, Because the way it works, especially through ACX, is that let's say you do one audiobook. Awesome. It sells for, you know, for, for 20 bucks on Audible. Well, every time it sells, you get 20% royalty share, which is cool. But if it only sells 10 copies, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's not going to pay your bills. So James needs to find another full-time job. So here we are now going through the summertime and about July hits, and I get picked up by a digital marketing company called Haibu. It's a call center. And James does <laughs> not do well in call centers. Um, strictly outbound calls and you were required to make at least like a hundred to 120 calls per day 
wow. calling people who have no knowledge that you're getting ready to call them to ask them questions about their small to medium business. Wow. And um, so I lasted three months there. And then right after that, got picked up by GoDaddy. Loved, loved, loved working for that place. Yes, it's a call center, but it's the reverse. Not right. making outbound calls. I'm actually taking calls of people who want to talk to me to help wow. them to fix their problem. The atmosphere at GoDaddy was phenomenal. I mean, probably one of the most chilled, laxed, amazing party environments I've ever worked for. June 2019, I'm taking calls. My sales are starting to drop by this point. I'm trying to pull strings, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And I hear that still small voice that says, it's time to move on, son. After that call's done, or after every call, I should say, we have about 30 seconds in between each call. The very next one, it's time to move on, son. I'm not sure I heard you clearly. I mean, I know very well who's talking to me by this point. <laughs> I heard that same phrase for the next like four to five days, the same way in between every single call. Wow. I was like, all right, fine, fine. You, you have my attention. Where am I moving to? He goes, I'm not going to tell you that, but you need to go home and tell your wife you're leaving GoDaddy. I'm like, <laughs> she's going to kill me. He goes, you don't worry about that. And, and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Flag on the play, Lord. Um, you brought me to GoDaddy. This was your calling. He goes, I know very well what I did. And I'm telling you, it's time to move on. I'm like, awesome. Let's go home. Hi, honey. Um, Lord tells us it's time to move on. Uh, it's, it's time to leave go, daddy. She gets up from the couch, walks out the front door. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Much appreciated. <laughs> Much appreciated. That is insane. We're going to pause right there. We're going to take a next break. This is my 10 minute stories. I'm here with James Cheatham. This is a hilarious episode, guys. Can't wait to get back to you. <laughs>